all right welcome back to the channel warhammer man back in the studio and today we've got some corn content so if you're into world eaters or some corn demons uh, get excited it's, we knew it was just a matter of time but after decades of service the corn berserkers earn bulked up blessings so it was very obvious when they talked about world eaters getting their own codex we were going to see some corn berserkers uh, so here's our first look it's been a truly bracing corn day we've seen a realm murdering gore chosen rules for hordes of blood slick demons and downright hungry looking seventh legion shoulders mountains of skulls tower towards the sky blood sloshing down from their lofty peaks out of the rising carnage steps forth a solitary figure clad in crimson and brass well i don't think the paint job looks like he's clad in brass but i get what they're saying uh very cool though obviously this is a unit champion or something like that um or and I want to say you can take a couple plasma pistols as just like the special weapon for Berserkers. So it uh, could be just a regular guy actually with the plasma pistol. Uh, but the cool looking corn axe. Nice symbol on there. Uh, very like up to date quality. Really, really nice. Yeah, it looks good. Super dynamic pose. We got some chains. We got some skulls, some grenades. Some nice little trim. Yeah, it looks really good. Looks really good. I mean, super basic, but... You know, once we see the whole squad, we can really get excited. The mighty chains that once held Angren back are no match for his unfettered rage. In his wake follow the corn berserkers, brutal foot soldiers grasping roaring chain blades caked with viscera. The current corn berserkers are one of the longest serving plastic kits of the 41st millennium, a genuine classic that has spent two decades out on the battlefield, earning them a nice retirement in corn's domain on the soothing banks of the rivers of blood. So this is one of the old corn berserkers. Uh, they were great models for a long time. Uh, but now when you look at them, I mean, they are just super, super dated. A couple of the helmets were a little rough. Some of the poses as well. Uh, but they were, you could make them do. They held up pretty good for 20 something years. Uh, but they're well overdue. The corn berserker is dead. Long live the corn berserker. An all new and very scully plastic kit. These fierce line breakers will now look even better as they crash headlong into the enemy's front line in a maelstrom of violence. Codex World Eaters is on its way, albeit a little while off yet. Okay, so a little while off, and we're in August now, so do we get it before the end of the year? I don't know, a little while off doesn't sound like by the end of the year, So, uh, but pretty nice looking overall. Definitely a fan of the Berserker. I'm assuming, I mean, they look scaled up, but then also just the overall, I mean, just, he's just beefy, taller, more built, nicer, crisper detail. The pose is cool, super dynamic, especially compared to the old stuff. So very, very nice. Uh, we've also got for corn day, kill name burn accessories with the world eater upgrades for the Horus heresy. It might be corn day, blood, skulls, brass, etc. But there was a time when the world eaters weren't quite so red or angry. Before they were swayed in the merits of the cranial augmentation of an all crimson palette, the 12th Legion had a rather fetching livery of blue, white, and gold. Yikes. I mean, I like the old blue and white paint jobs, but I don't know about that helmet. Of course, they were still called the World Eaters, and their logo was nevertheless a fanged maw consuming a planet. But during the Great Crusade, the earlier years of the Horus Heresy, the... Oh, you know what? I might have said 7, but really it was 12. That makes total sense why I was so confused. Uh, saw read more as a daring accent rather than the be-all, end-all of battleware. They did, however, sport some truly iconic helmets, crests, and you can now outfit your fledgling band of murderous maniacs with the appropriate headgear man these look like really really old models i like the bear head that's pretty cool this one is okay maybe it's the paint jobs i don't know they, it's just not for me some of the horse heresy stuff while it could be completely right for the lore and everything just is a complete miss for me and that's okay we don't have to always like the same stuff uh, this set of 11 resin heads from Forge World contains five unique designs, which will fit in the new plastic 
Mark VI tactical squads. There are three sets of three crested helmets of the rank and file plus one slightly more ostentatious one for a squad leader and a leering bear head uh, replete with butcher's nails. These helmets will pair delightfully with a set of ten resin shoulder pads which also forthcoming for the world eaters from Forge World. So we see the world eater shoulder pads. Man, I honestly, just kind of off topic really quick here, but I don't know how if, okay, I don't know how Forge World is going to continue like staying in business or making stuff with stuff like this, because this is something that like literally anybody can make in Slicer in about five minutes and then 3D print for free. And with them bringing over like a lot of the kits from the main Forge World line into Games Workshop plastics, I mean, it's going to leave still a lot of like custom cool sculpts and everything, but I just don't know how something like this is viable going into the future. I mean, sure, you can do it for a little bit here, but I don't know how much longer it lasts. These are like super subpar, in my opinion, like the detail quality and everything, not cool. Uh, five designs in total, you get two of each, all embossed with slightly more subtle Legion iconography, and you'll see on the battlefields in the 41st millennium. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's somebody out there that's like super excited for these. I don't know what was already available for World Eaters. But man, I, I don't know. These are just not that cool. But hey, it is what it is. Uh, and last but not least for Corn Day, which I didn't even know it was Corn Day until we started this video, uh, Codex Chaos Demons has even better ways to reap a cranial crop. So we've seen a couple things from Demons so far. Uh, you aren't losing your head. Corn Day continues with a jaunt into the howling vortex of demonic slaughter that is upcoming Codex Chaos Demons. The Demons of Corn are warp-fueled manifestations of rage and violence that love nothing more than to kick about the galaxy. Slaughtering all who stand in their way while collecting skulls aplenty for the Lord of Murder. So we see a little bloodthirster action, some blood letters, some corn dogs. Facing off with some uh, Adeptus Mechanicus. A couple of Scutari about to get et. Super cool. Nice looking models. I mean the Chaos Demon stuff looks really good and the new Angron looks awesome. This stuff has held up real well. Uh, we've already had a sneak peek at the blood-fueled bulk up in stores for blood letters, but these hungry flesh hounds have also been at the protein. They're gaining faster movement, more strength, and an extra attack. This pairs up wonderfully with their new Savage Pounce ability, which confers extra damage on their gore-drenched fangs if they've left into combat this turn. So obviously, Chaos Demons were super overdue for an update, and... Uh, you know they still played pretty decently i think the problem with the demons was is that you pretty much had to build like one of two armies i'd like for the coal codex not necessarily to be like amazingly powerful but just everything in it to be good and balanced against other armies but mostly against itself i think that's one thing i like about the tyranid codex so much pre and post nerf is that there's just so much good viable stuff in there it's not like the old Tyranids where it was like basically hey take a bunch of like weapons hide behind cover and shoot stuff that you can't see that can't see you and if you don't take those specific units your army is going to be terrible. Um, I like the idea of being able to like viably field the different stuff that you enjoy. So here we see the flesh hound. If you haven't seen any of the new demon stuff they basically have two different saves. One is for shooting and one is for combat. I believe there's still going to be like regular invulnerable saves. I saw something about potentially a rule that makes it so you can't take away their invulnerable saves. I'm not sure if that's for everything yet. Uh, but essentially they have like, some have like a 5 up, 4 up. So they might be like okay against shooting but good in combat. Or maybe it was the other way around. I can't remember. And then vice versa. Some are like really good against shooting. Some are really good against combat. Again, just going to kind of, I mean it makes sense. But it's definitely going to, more rules, more rules bloat, more killing, more saves. It's just bloat 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 in my opinion uh, so flesh hound old was 10 inch move weapon skill 3 strength 4 toughness 4 wounds 2 attacks 2 leadership 7 6 up save and now he has 12 inch move so 2 inches extra weapon skill 3 strength 5 instead of strength 4 toughness 4 wounds 2 attacks 3 so he gained an attack leadership 7 and then he has a 5 up 4 up so and again just not to be like super nitpicky here but the truth is 
This had a 6-up save before, which is terrible. And now it's going to either a 5-up or a 4-up, depending which one. Why not just make them both 4-up or make them both 5-up? It just, I don't know. For me, it's just an extra rule that just extra complicates everything, extra slows down everything, etc. Uh, so Savage Pounce, each time a model in this unit makes an attack with its Gore Drench Fangs, if the model's unit made a charge move or performed heroic intervention this turn, add one to the attack's damage characteristics. So that's pretty good. Plus one damage on the charge or heroic intervention. The Mighty Skull Taker delivers a delightfully straightforward interpretation of his name with his updated Skulls for Corn ability. Not only can he re-roll hit and wound rolls against enemy characters, his other abilities also get a range boost for each champion he slays. Holding his newly acquired Severed Heads aloft, this iconic Herald of Corn inspires lesser demons to put their nose to the Skull Grindstone. His Lord of Getap Decapitation's ability allows him to boost the frenzied accuracy of blood letters until uh, units within 6 inches, then 9 inches, then 12 inches. So his little like aura gets bigger, which is pretty cool. Uh, so each time this model, so this is obviously for the uh, Skull Taker, wasn't that his name? Yeah, Skull Taker. And he's basically like a character version of a uh, blood letter. Skulls for corn. Each time this model makes a melee attack against an enemy character unit, you can reroll the hit roll and reroll the wound roll. So meant to hunt characters. Each time an enemy character unit is destroyed by an attack made by this model, increase the range of this model's Herald of Corn and Lord of Decapitation's abilities by three inches to a max of twelve. So if he kills a character, he gets the boost. And then Lord of Decapitations, in your command phase, select one friendly Blood Letters core unit within six inches of this model. Until the start of your next command phase, each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, add one to the attack's hit roll. So pretty good. Pretty good. Plus one to hit for one of your uh, Blood Letter units. Blood Letter core units. Rerolls against characters, and then uh, his buffs get bigger. Not bad, not bad. I have to see his stats, obviously, and everything. Uh, corn generals who take a moment to cut through the red haze of violence can couple with the frantic bloodthirst, bloodlust stratagem. Usable in either player's fight phase, this slavering surge lets you aggressively move a bloodletter core unit towards the nearest opponent. Dashing into an objective, cutting off an avenue of retreat, or just closing the distance for it. next turn's charge. Or for just one command point, you can unleash your rage in combat to get an extra pile in before your foe can find their footing. So frenetic bloodlust, one slash two command points. Use a stratagem at the start of the fight phase. Select one blood letters core unit from your army. If that unit is not within engagement range of enemy units, make a normal move up to six inches must end move closer to the closest visible enemy unit that's pretty good if that unit is within engagement range of any enemy units make a pile in move with that unit if this unit makes a normal move the stratagem costs two command points otherwise it costs one so that's pretty good because you could essentially have moved Fail to charge and then still get to do that. Oh, no. Yeah, start of the fight phase. Or you can move, advance, and then still get another normal move at the start of the fight phase. So that is pretty good. Definitely has some benefits. And then, you know, the one command point ability is pretty good, too. Pretty good. It's always nice to have a little mobility up your sleeve. Codex Chaos Demons is a boiling cauldron of otherworldly, vicious, unleashing, unleashing nightmare hordes that bring ruination to all who stand in their way. Of course, all four of the Dark Gods are represented in the new book. They just don't dare show their faces on Korn's special day. So pretty cool. Obviously, so far, the Angron model looks amazing. The new Korn Berserker looks pretty freaking awesome, too. I'm sure they are all going to be great. Um, good for corn. Uh, getting like the double dose with the demons. And then also 
with the Berserkers, aka, uh, you know, the World Eaters Codex. So I am curious when that's going to come. And I really want to know what the order is for the next few Codexes. It seems like it's going to be Demons. Then we don't know what's next. And then probably World Eaters. And then after that, I mean, either Guard or Votan. I don't know what the... We're, we're kind of just in the dark right now. We know what the next four codexes are going to be. We know Demons is the next one of those four. But realistically, we don't know if it's going to be Votan, World Eaters, or Astra Militarum, and in what order. Uh, but we have seen a lot of stuff for all of them, really, at this point in time. So far, I would say the Astra Militarum, we have seen probably... Well, and, and the uh, World Eaters, we've seen probably the least. We've seen quite a bit of Votan and quite a bit of new rules for demons. We've seen a decent amount of Imperial Guard units, but really only in like two like pictures, essentially. So looking forward to seeing everything coming. Uh, tell me if you're excited about this, if you are a World Eaters player, or you're going to be a World Eaters player, or if you more broadly worship corn and you're into the demons more or just as much. Uh, share down below. Always like to hear back from you guys. I appreciate everybody that checked out the video today. Thank you all for liking and subscribing. It really helps out the channel, helps us grow. The growth this year has been absolutely uh, just phenomenal. And I thank each and every one of you uh, that takes the time to like, subscribe, comment, share, uh, you know, all of that good stuff. Watch each and every one of these videos. Love interacting with you guys in the chat. We definitely have an awesome, awesome community. Uh, I'm very fortunate that. Uh, you know, I have found you guys and you have each found me. So uh, if you do enjoy these daily videos, reactions, reviews, and news, or you haven't checked out the tutorials for painting, modeling, conversion, uh, magnetization, there's a bunch of playlists. Make sure to check those out. And uh, if you are into Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team Necromunda, Age of Sigmar, War Guy, or some Horus Heresy, make sure to like and subscribe for those daily videos. That's it for today. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and I'm out of here.